Okay, welcome to the Select Board, Board of Health and Sewer Commissioners meeting of July 6, 2023 at 5 p.m. here in the main meeting room at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. The meeting will be held in person, the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices. The toll-free number is 1-833-548-0276. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580. And the passcode is 570012. All right, we are in a session. I'll call the meeting to order. We are su uh, suspending public comment. And I guess um, Denise is not, oh, here she, she is coming back. Uh, she had some questions. So we can, when she's back, we'll talk about that. So um, we have, uh, well, let's move on to the signatory decision items that, Chris, uh, we wanted to talk about the host agreement. Sure. So the host community agreement with Sunny Days, um, that's something that was brought to our attention by the owner of the establishment, Ken Boquillian. Um, he has requested that the board extend the two-year period that's in their host community agreement for becoming operational. Um, as you know, the HCA with them was approved in September of 2021, meaning that in a couple of months, that two-year period will have lapsed. And unless the board grants them an extension, that does result in an automatic revocation of the HCA. Um, so he's hoping the board will consider granting that extension to allow him to continue gathering the necessary paperwork and making sure that he can bring the business up online. Um, Tim, how do you feel? I, I'm... I, I have no problem with it, but um, I just wanted to ask: Did did Lisa Mead's office say that they needed to draft any language, or did they say we could just verbally give an extension? Because I'm sure I checked that today, um, and we don't need a physical signature, but the minutes from this meeting will be considered for granting the extension. Okay, and. Um, we've been asked to grant a two-year extension right yes i believe that's correct okay so i'm fine with this if you'd like me to make a motion yes go ahead um i make a motion to extend the host community agreement between the town of deerfield massachusetts and sunny days for a period of two years beyond the current um current period of, um, oh, I don't see the date on this. But Chris, you just said it was, um, we signed it in 2021, right? Yes. September, 2021. So this would be through September, 2025. Yep. I will second that. Is there any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Tim Hill, GI. Carolyn Ness, I. Okay. Um, Chris, why don't you um, update us a little bit on um, confidence analytics? Sure. So the second matter before the board tonight is the confidence analytics host community agreement. Uh, that's one that hasn't yet been granted, but uh, confidence analytics Inc is a tenant of sunny days um, at their site off of Greenfield road. Uh, they're specifically the lab testing portion of the campus, and the proprietor, uh, Mr. Shoot, I am forgetting his name. Um, but regardless, he sent over this host community agreement in its latest form, and he's been uh, coordinating with our council uh, regarding some changes that they're looking to mutually come to agreement on. And as of about an hour ago, there were a couple of extra changes that had been proposed. Um, 
I believe that they are trying to protect their liability, um, but our council has asked if our board would be amenable to um, a couple of extra conditions that hadn't been initially agreed upon. So, so this is this is Brian um, Hardovic or whatever. No, he was from Sunny Days. This is uh, Mr. Nick Mosley. Um, um, Nick, Nick, Mosley. Okay. Nick Mosley from Confidence Analytics. So as of about an hour ago, this was... So they asked our council to consider um the points that uh confidence will be notified in the event of property tax or excise tax default by the landlord confidence will be afforded a hearing and a reasonable opportunity to cure prior to license revocation and that their liability and obligations with respect to real estate property tax and excise tax relate only to the 5,000 square foot building that they occupy um they're wondering if the town would be willing to entertain those additions to the post community agreement that you have in your packet. Um, this isn't one that's in effect yet, but it's one that we're hoping to get approved within the near future. Um, and yeah, um, are there any additional questions on that at all? Um, I feel like Sarah could put a sticky on or make a note on um, the sunny days stuff if it got behind. Sure. And that wouldn't be too huge of a lift. So I don't have a problem with that, but I'm not sure about the second request. What do, what do you think, Tim? I'm not sure if we want to be on the handle uh, hook for that. Might That might require extra checking. I mean, there's so much stuff we have to do already. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think either request is unreasonable, um, but um, certainly, um, I think that there's, uh, you know, the, the opportunity to, um, correct, um, this might be something that would be best handled. I guess my initial response is I think that, that the, that we're reaching the point where both sides can agree on something. And um, it might be beneficial to all parties to have a meeting with confidence analytics and um, and a, 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 you know, Elizabeth Lydon from NTC uh, to finalize what um, finding final points need to be finalized. <laughs> um, I don't think it's unreasonable to say, look, we're just a lease uh, holder. We don't own property uh, and we would like to limit our liability. And I don't know that it would be particular particular burden to limit it to the 5,000, the value of the 5,000 square foot facility. But, um, I, you know, I, I think tonight, maybe what we should be thinking about is we can't vote on anything anyway. So, I mean, is there consensus that we're willing to entertain these points and subject to a final conversation? Yeah, I, I yes. I just feel that um, we, we don't have the ability to, tr to track <laughs> or to make sure everything is tracked all the time. But, I, right. you know, we run, we run who hasn't paid their taxes after you know, the first of, the, of May and and whenever the taxes are due, the first part of the taxes are due, so. Yeah, I mean, I don't see that we're gonna be in a position if it's sunny days doesn't pay its taxes in one one of its semi-annual or quarterly tax leak, uh, payments. We're gonna know about it relatively quickly and Competence Analytics is gonna know about it relatively quickly. Um, uh, so, you know, like I say, I, I don't, without talking to the lawyer, I don't know, um, whether this 
I think you're talking about point C that our liability and obligations with respect to real estate property tax. Mm -hmm. Is that the one you're talking about? Or are you talking about yeah. B, which says we'll be afforded a hearing and a reasonable opportunity to cure? Um, I'm talking about B, I think. Limiting it to the excise or um, here? It's right here. Okay. Do we want to let Denise speak if she can speak? Yeah. I don't know. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Yeah, I just started again. Yeah, I'm just sort of curious. I know that, you know, Ken has worked with them before. So I'm sort of curious as to what their agreement has been in the past. Um, you know, it was my understanding that that um, Sunny Days was going to be responsible for all of that and that um, the testing facility was just sort of an add on. So, you know, I don't know. My point is that I, I tend to agree that they should have very limited liability. But well, okay. So if 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 they just need to be notified if the taxes aren't paid, I think we can do that. That's A. But B is the one I'm thinking of. Confidence will be afforded a hearing and a reasonable opportunity to cure prior to license re revoking the license. Well, why would we revoke the license for taxes that Sunny day own. Exactly. It's, it's a whole different entity. Yeah. And if I may, um, so we did get a comment from Elizabeth Leiden at um, Mead Tellerman and Costa regarding this specific point B. Um, and it was that uh, she doesn't necessarily feel it's necessary. Um, notice and hearing is a requirement of the state law. And so she doesn't believe we necessarily need to have that in the host community agreement. Um, as for the limitation requested in Part C, that would need to be considered by the board. Um, but that was that was her opinion on Part B. Yeah, so I mean, it sounds like um, Part B is covered in state law. So therefore, there are two ways to go. One is that if it makes competence analytics feel more comfortable having it in their HCA, since it's already requirement of state law, there's really no harm, um, you know, but if they become confident that state law dictates. So I don't see a downside to it, but that's again, why I would suggest talking to, you know, the, the legal firm with competence analytics as legal team here so we can fully understand what everyone is saying um, and, and then just finalize it. Um, um, yeah, I'm fine with that. It, it's not, Chris, it sounds like we have consensus. Right, okay. Denise? You don't have a problem with that? No. No. Okay. I think everybody's in generally on board. Okay. So are we interested in setting up a meeting with them or are we interested in... Um... I don't even think we need a meeting. I think okay. the lawyers should get together. Okay. And just sort it out so that, that they can present us with something that's final. Okay. So yeah. generally in favor it sounds like by consensus yeah okay. yeah i mean i don't think there's any reason why we would say if you put in clause b we're not going to agree to this sure um and the other thing is that there was some in the email chain there was some discussion about uh, needing a planning board approval or something like that um and my understanding was that the planning board has already reviewed the site plan yeah. and they've agreed to have a grow facility, a sales facility, and a testing facility. And all of those things have already gone through. So could you check with our lawyer and see if there's some different planning um, board um, requirement that we're unaware of? Certainly, yeah, I can look into that because I also noticed that and had that same question. Thank you, Chris. Sure. Um, so you're clear we have consensus and just to try to move forward. Okay. Yeah, and if, if I could, um, I'd like to try and see if we can get this done by the end of the month, um, if not sooner. Sure. Uh, you know, so I don't want this to just fall off the radar and come back and bite us in September. Yeah. Agreed. All right. Um, next item on the agenda is um, letters of support. The only thing, um, Chris, there was a letter of support for the mural uh, okay. that um, Judith, um, I, I can send forward the email to you. Yes, I think I put that on the agenda for next week. 
Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Good. If we can get that ready. Um, do you have any updates on the Leary lot other than it's going to close tomorrow, which is really wonderful news? Yes. Um, so the land swap is in a lot of progress, it sounds like, and we should hopefully have a closing date of tomorrow. Um, my only other update regarding the Leary lot is that we have managed to get a meeting scheduled with Eversource and their rates manager. Um, I sent an email out about that today to members of the select board, as well as the energy committee um, to answer those questions about demand charges that were brought up with reasonable concern at the last select board meeting. Um, the good news is that it sounds like they have made some changes to their rate structure. And I did make a request that we switch to a new rate that does not include a demand charge. So we might not see that effect instantaneously, but that is something that we should see fairly quickly take effect and oh, Chris, thank would really you. quell a lot of those concerns, I think. Yeah, that's been really horrendous. So thank you. Sure. Um, did you have anything else you wanted to bring up? Um, I think, so I had put on the agenda, the vote of authorization of myself as a signatory in place of the town administrator. I know that that was voted on at an emergency meeting, but just so it's also voted on in a regular meeting that's posted 48 hours in advance. Um, I figured it was best practice to include that here too. Absolutely. I will make the motion to appoint Chris Nolan um, as being the author authorized signatory for the select board. And I'll second that. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. I did have one to follow up on one thing about um, the Eversource meeting. Mm -hmm. um, these um, these charging stations that exist at the moment, um, are they owned by the town? Are they considered to be town property? They are. Um, we purchased them um, through an agreement with, I believe, ChargePoint operates them. Right. Um, but that is our property, yes. Okay, and so one thing I'd like to explore is if the town is part of um, an aggregation, who sets the price of the electricity at these chargers? Um, because if we're getting kilowatt hour at 9.4 cents currently, going up to about 14, you know, nine in January, if the price of electricity is much higher at these things, is that because charge point is charging a lot of money per kilowatt hour? Do we have any control over setting the rates? That's a good question. Um, I'm not sure of the answer myself, but I can definitely do some research on that and get back okay. to you. Yeah, it's thanks. It's it's not a huge thing. The first thing is sure. the, the demand charge is the first big step forward. So thank you for doing that. Absolutely. And I'm thrilled that we were able to hopefully get that resolved. Um, uh, Denise had some questions on Nextamped. Were you able to sort that out, Chris, at all? Um, I'm not sure what her specific what, questions Denise, were. Denise, can you can you just um, go over your concerns about um, the public hearing for Nextamp? Um, I'm trying to remember. Oh, okay. When I when I talked to Chris this morning, he said it was posted. So it was posted two weeks in the newspaper. Right, right. No, I don't, yeah, I don't recall having concern. I'm, I'm trying to remember. So I was just talking to Amy today because there are two next stamp. There's one on set, right? That still, I don't think has been totally resolved. I think there, there are a few things that they still need to do, but then the solar array, no, Amy, I think I had questions, but then I, I got a whole folder, a gigantic book <laughs> about next amp. So I think we're good to go on that. Oh, okay. Because I, when I talked to you last night, I had written down the note that I was supposed to follow up with Chris. Was that on Nexamp or was that on something else? Sorry, I'm I, sure I, you said Nexamp, yeah. and I, that's why yeah. I was a little bit confused because I did check that it is posted. It was posted for the public hearing. Right, right. No, no. I, th I think we're all set on that. I think everyone. I think at that point that we spoke, I may not have had all the information. You know, Amy was on vacation. She just got back. There's a oh, lot, but okay. we do have all the information that has been sent out to the planning board. So I think, I think we're good on that. Oh, okay. Good. I think more so was the, um, whoops, was the question about um, 
Snowberry and what the expectations were because I, Chris, I think you put it in our report and I'm not really clear on what report. I mean, Snowberry came to you first, then they're coming to the planning board where, you know, we have the plans, we know what they want. So base, and we have to have the public hearing and then it goes to town meeting, right? Is that correct? So it goes, it's been accepted. Uh, well, it's been passed from the select board to the planning board for a public hearing within 45 days. Um, and at that point it gets sent back to the select board to vote to send to town meeting, essentially. It's a little bit of a convoluted process, yeah. um, but that's yeah, that kind of- what, what the public hearing is doing is verifying that it was, there's no question it was built to code. Right. And, right. And, you know, are there any problems with accepting it? Does anyone have any problems with accepting it? Okay. Or, Chris, you know, Chris, I mean, is, is Tony, Tony and Bruce, are they going to be at our planning board meeting or we're just going by what the select board said and the information that we received? Um, if they're not aware already, I will make sure that the um, association is aware that that hearing is going to be happening on July 10th, if I remember correctly. Which, which is Monday. I have every confidence in Tony. <laughs> okay. So. Sure, I will make them aware of that if they aren't aware okay. of it, but I, I believe they've been notified. Um, okay, okay, thanks. If planning board has any questions, I'm sure they'd be happy to help answer them. Mm -hmm. Good, okay. Yeah, I, th I think we're good on that. All right, thank you. Is there anything else you wanted to bring up, Tim? Um, did I... Um... No, I don't think so. I, I was uh, going to mention this at CCI, but I'll mention it for the benefit of Denise, since I missed that meeting, and I apologize for. Okay, hey, that's okay. A little difficulty with my pizza, um, but um, I was notified by um, the Washington um, office of Senator Markey that they have included the four million dollar um, request. Um, for the 1888 building in their budget package that's moving forward um, and that should be, they consider it a significant step and assuming that all things move ahead normally, this is not the type of request that becomes the object of political infighting. So wow. they were saying that, uh, you know, they there it's one of three from Massachusetts requests that be, are being supported by the senator so it's a good mm -hmm. sign for us it's not a done thing or anything, but it's it's a positive step hey tim is it four million i i, I thought when i heard it before that it was that they put in for three million no, i four, mean four, regardless four, four million four million yeah perfect everyone is four million yep but we won't know until when december i know the timeline's a little yeah. different yeah, basically, yeah, it's December and um, the budget process gets wrapped up and uh, that's when we would have probably a, a, a real answer in okay. December, yeah. Okay, great. Just one other question. Have, have you set a time for, the, uh, for a special town meeting? Will we have one? And if so, when would it, when could it possibly be? Is October 23rd, is it? Yes, Monday, October 23rd at 7 p.m. is the tentative date. Okay, great, thanks. I'll put that on my calendar. I mean, we haven't guaranteed it yet, Denise, but- right. It's still put, still good to put in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah because of the timing of the um, congressionally directed spending requests, um, there's really no, no action that we'll be taking on at a special town meeting. It'll go to a regular town meeting. Yep, okay. So, um okay well that's good thanks i'll put that in anyway as a question mark okay. so anything from you are you no i think i'm all set okay well, if Denise, if you're all if you're all set, we're gonna adjourn our meeting because Tim and I have another boo meeting. Yes, have fun. <laughs> all right, I make a motion to adjourn. Okay. I will second that. All those in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. Carolyn Nessai. Thank you.